So good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Good Friday time of worship and reflection this morning. It's going to be led by uh, six of us here, uh, clergy and leaders of the churches in Broadstone, and we'll be joined by friends from our churches uh, who will be reading to us. We're going to be journeying through today through six stations of the story of this day, be a reading, a reflection and a space for silence. And then we're going to pray together using the words, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. And then we can all share together from our homes, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. My thanks to everyone that has been involved in pulling this together. Uh, we hope you find it a real blessed time of reflection. So perhaps as we begin, you could imagine yourself silently walking the streets of Broadstone together praying for people as you go. Just so imagine walking with Jesus along those same streets, past those same homes and roads. Imagine Jesus carrying his cross as he suffers for the world, God's world and our world. This is the love of God on display for all to see. And so as we begin our worship together this morning, we're going to proclaim that this is our God, Jesus, the servant king. Thank you. 
Early in the morning, the chief priests met hurriedly with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole council, and made their plans. They put Jesus in chains, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, So you say. The chief priests were accusing Jesus of many things, so Pilate questioned him again. Aren't you going to answer? Listen to all their accusations. Again, Jesus refused to say a word, and Pilate was amazed. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to ask instead for Pilate to set Barabbas free for them. Pilate spoke again to the crowd. What then do you want to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. But what crime has he been committed? Pilate asked. They shouted all the louder, crucify him. Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he set Barabbas free for them. And then he had Jesus whipped and handed him over to be crucified. So they accused Jesus of many things. Mark doesn't give us the list but I suspect that it contains all kinds of things that we would consider good, just not done in quite the right way. Healing, but on the Sabbath. Touching the unclean. Eating, but with sinners. Acting with authority, but not the permission of the leaders. Claiming to be the son of God and destroy the temple and build it again in three days. Or well, that's what it sounded like. Surely this man needed to be dealt with. And perhaps it's gonna be easier than they thought as he seems to quietly accept his fate. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The soldiers took Jesus inside to the courtyard of the governor's palace and called together the rest of the company. They put a purple robe on Jesus, made a crown out of thorn branches and put it on his head. And then they began to salute him. Long live the king of the Jews. They beat him over the head with a stick, spat on him, fell on their knees and bowed to him. When they had finished mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. He knew this day would come, but somehow still had hoped he might escape it, had prayed that every healing, sign and teaching would be the one to open hearts and minds and power games to life had even tried to shout and curse and turn the tide by turning tables, but that just made things worse. So now he gives in, admits that life conspired to bring him here, and lets the silent work of love at last begin. In lamb-like peaceful protest, our liberation's hands are bound, our healer beaten. Laying power down, he stands in bloody solidarity with every body sworn at, bruised and broken at the whim and words of others. Sits with relentless gentleness and waits until the soldiers, bitter, angry, fearful, proud and bored, exhaust themselves and breathless heft the heavy cross towards him. He wants to run, but stretches out his hands instead towards the long awaited wood. A carpenter to the end, he pauses at the threshold of the dawn to test its weight and feel the grain. For a second he remembers to trust that he will stand here again 
but then he bows his head and starts to walk. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Surely he was born our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus falls a first time, a second time, and then again. Jesus falls, revealing his suffering, weakness, fragility, showing us it is okay to be those things. We know what it is to be fragile or to stumble. We needn't fear that. The only thing we need to fear is being afraid of love. When Jesus falls, he does so under the weight of the cross. But he falls too under the weight of the sorrow he carries for a humanity so afraid of love, it tries to put it to death, stamp it out. But Jesus will rise to his feet. His love for others will carry him. His father's love will hold him as God's love holds us. Perfect love will drive out fear. Love will rise again over all our falling. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. On their way through Jerusalem, they met a man named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. How heavy it must have been for him to carry that wood. He had carried wood before, but this would hold him up for his execution. This was his cross to bear. Simon from Cyrene was pulled in to help him. There in the crowd, the next minute in the centre. He helped Jesus carry the heavy load of the cross on the way to Calvary. Today there are many carrying heavy loads. The asylum seeker in a dinghy crossing the channel. The homeless people in shop doorways across Bournemouth and Paul. The lonely person down the road, coping with loneliness, another meal for one, or the family with no food in the cupboard. As Simon of Cyrene carried the load, is there a way we can carry the load today? Is there a way that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The people stayed there watching him. The leaders jeered at him and the soldiers mocked him. Some women, his friends from Galilee, 
looked on at a distance. We look from a distance, a distance of time and space and culture, a distance of a Friday in England. And for us, it hurts to watch Jesus dying, even at a distance. It hurts to know that we have been rescued. It hurts to know how much we are valued and loved. It was about 12 o'clock when the sun stopped shining and darkness covered the whole country until three o'clock and the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I place my spirit. He said this and died. In your hands he placed himself, all that he was, all that he had ever been all his beauty, all his obedience, all his loving. In God's hands he placed himself. He was returning to his father. He was going home. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When it was evening, a rich man from Arimathea arrived. His name was Joseph, and he was also a disciple of Jesus. He went into the presence of Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate gave orders for the body to be given to Joseph. So Joseph took it, wrapped it in a new linen sheet, and placed it in his own tomb, which he had recently dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there, facing the tomb. It was the least I could do, <clears throat> the very, very least. And yes, I should have done more, I know that. I ought to have spoken out before the council, begged them to reconsider, publicly declare my faith. I should have told Pilate of their pre-jury, pleaded with him to show mercy, explained what sort of kingdom Jesus was talking about. But I didn't, did I? I didn't say anything. I just watched and listened. I didn't do anything. I just kept my own counsel. I skulked in the shadows, observed from the outside, bit my tongue and let them crucify the Messiah. When the chance was there to declare my allegiance, I chickened out. When the moment came to make my stand, I was afraid. So that's why I've acted now, offering my tomb to provide for his burial. It's not much, I realize that. A bit like shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted. But it's all that there is left in a small way in which I can make amends. A token gesture, you may be right. A feeble attempt to solve my conscience, most probably. But I hope it's more than that. You see, I've had enough of hiding, enough of closet discipleship, enough of this faith that's afraid to call its name. So I've thrown caution to the wind and nailed my colors to the mast. It may cost me my position, 
it will certainly cost me my friends. It might even cost me my life. But if Jesus could willingly sacrifice all that for me, who deserves so little, surely I can do something for him who deserves so much. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. And as we come to the conclusion of our time together, shall we share together the words our Saviour has taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So shall we go now in peace to know the power of the cross of Jesus.